Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm gonna be showing you how you can do custom color maps with matplotlib in Python. So color maps are really cool if you're wanting to customize them, you can make really cool visualizations. Color maps are really useful when you're using any sort of plot or any sort of visualization that's going to require a color map. And if you're wanting to customize that, this is exactly how you're gonna do it. So whether you're using something like KDE plot, heat map, or if you're using something such as like a hex bin plot, or you could be doing something like a scatter plot, wanting to show the different distribution as a different metric. So custom color maps are really cool and they're super easy to code as well. It's only about a line of code to create the actual custom color map. So we're gonna jump into a Jupyter notebook and I'm gonna kind of walk you through the process. But if you haven't already, be sure to hit subscribe, like the video, and comment down below if there's any other ideas or tutorials that you would like me to cover and things that you would like to see in the future on the channel. So let's just head over to the computer and we can get started. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to import the modules that we're gonna need and we're just gonna be creating um, some random numbers to plot. So we're not gonna be importing any sort of data set or anything but really we're just gonna need a couple of packages to use. So we're gonna import NumPy as MP. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just so it's easier to see. So we're gonna import NumPy as MP. And what this does is it's gonna allow us to create the numbers. And then as well, we are going to import pandas as PD. So we're gonna create a data frame because to use the heat map that we're gonna create, it's, we kind of need a data frame to do it. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to import Seaborn as SNS. So Seaborn is just another visualization package in Python. You may need to install this in your command line or your terminal just by typing in pip install Seaborn, or you might need to upgrade it as well just by typing in pip install dash dash upgrade Seaborn just to make sure you have the latest version. And then to create the custom color maps, what we are going to do is we are going to say from matplotlib.colors import linear segmented color map. So with linear segmented color map with the L, the S, and the C capitalized. So run that cell. And the next thing we need to do is just create the data. So we're just gonna create 500 different numbers for our X and our Y variables. And we are just going to, those are gonna be random numbers in the range of one to 100. So to do this, we'll just say x equals np.random.randint, so just random integers. Then we set our lower bound of one, and then we have to put 101, 101, because Python goes up to, but not including. So really it's one to 100 is our range. And then we need to say how many of them we want, so we want 500. So just type it like that, and then you can do the same thing for y. You just say np.random.randint, and then we can just do one, comma 101, and then 500. And then we're just gonna throw these into a data frame. So the easiest way to do this is just to say df, so data frame, equals pd.dataframe. And then we need to pass in our columns. So, or essentially we need to pass in our data. So we're just gonna, in a list, we're gonna pass in X and Y. Then on the outside of the list, we need to pass in another list with our, um, essentially these are gonna be our index rows or our index names. So we're gonna do something called transposing here in a sec, just so it flips the columns and the rows. But we will just say X. So in strings, X and Y. And then the last thing we need to do is just say df equals df.t. So this is just for creating our own data frame that we can use. Obviously, in the real world, you're probably gonna have some sort of data frame or some sort of uh, data that you're using. So you might not have to do this, but this is just part of data science, data analytics, where you're having to work with and kind of, this is part of the cleansing of data is what I like to call it. The, cl the cleanse stage, get a nice cleanse. Anyways, what we can do is we can then look at our data frame. So as you can see, we have, there's gonna be, this is, this is only the top five rows, but we have 500 rows of random integers with two columns, X and Y. 
So the next thing we need to do is actually just create the custom color map. So to do this, we're gonna create a variable. And with this variable, we're gonna use this linear segmented color map from matplotlib. And we're going to pass in a lower bound and an upper bound of colors that we're wanting to kind of scale towards. So the easiest way I've found to create these color maps and to create ones that look good is to come over to this website called Coolers. I'm sure it's just trying to be colors, but it's two C's or two O's, I mean. So coolers.co. And they have this random generator of different uh, colors that you can create. And as well, they have these trending palettes. So I'm just gonna go into the trending palettes, go in here. And in these trending palettes, there's going to be basically all these different uh, palettes and everything. So I like to find some that go from a light to a dark color or the other way around, go from a dark to a light color. So what we could do is we could get one, say we want one that goes from light to dark. So we'll probably look at all of these and we'll be like, okay, here's one. It goes from this purple to this really dark purple, you know? Maybe you're wanting purple to be part of your visualization or that's part of like, if you're a sports team, maybe purple is the color of the team. I don't really know Orlando City, I guess, is an MLS team, but I don't really know if there's any teams with purple in them. Anyways, we'll take right here as you go over the colors, it gives you the hex code. So we'll get this lighter one right here, and then we'll come back here and we'll create our variable called my underscore color map and then we'll set this equal to linear segmented color map dot from underscore list. And then there's a couple things we need to pass in the parentheses. We first need to pass in a string, which is essentially just the title of it. So I usually just put my color map. You can call it, you can call it something else if you're keeping track of a lot of them. And then we'll put a comma. And then we need to pass in a list, which is our lower bound and our upper bound. So in this list, we'll do a string, put the hashtag or the pound, whatever you call it, and then we'll paste in that first hex code that we have. Then we'll pass in another one inside the list, just like we did with the first one, but we will go get that darker color. So this one right here, and we will pass that in. But it needs to make sure you have it in hex code, so with the hashtag. And then the next thing we need to do is pass in another argument this is just a capital N and really it's just kind of the number, like the number of colors that you want it to do essentially. Um, in the documentation, it just says int, but I've found, and a lot of people have found that if you have a higher number, it's a little bit smoother with the actual colors and everything. And the heat map looks a little bit smoother if you're creating a heat map. So we'll do 100, you can do anywhere between 50 to 150. I usually just do 100. So we'll run that and that's created our color map. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to create the heat map. It's something called a KDE plot in Seaborn. It's essentially just going to allow us to see the distribution of the X and Y values. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say KDE equals KDE or SNS dot KDE plot. So SNS is our Seaborn package. Then parentheses, I like to hit enter twice just so it kind of looks a little bit neater. And then we need to pass in our X and our Y values. So we'll say X equals DF.X and Y equals DF.Y. So what this is doing is this is saying our X is equal to our data frame X column and Y is equal to our data frame Y column. And then the next thing we gotta do is pass in our data. Essentially, we just tell it what our data frame is. So we say data equals DF, because that's the name of our data frame. And we can actually just plot this right now and I can kind of show you what it looks like if we don't do anything to it. So this is what a KDE plot looks like right now. We haven't passed in our custom color map. It's not shaded and it looks kind of weird, honestly. Like you can't really tell what's going on. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna pass in a couple more arguments. First, we're gonna say shade equals true. So this is gonna shade this area and we can run this. And now we can see, okay, those are shaded. The darker areas obviously are the ones where there's more data. 
And then as well, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in CMAP. So CMAP is then where we are going to pass in our custom color map. So if we say CMAP equals my underscore color map, then we can do that. And now we have our purple one that goes from light to dark. And then to kind of get the smooth look, we have to edit our two things. We have to edit the threshold and the number of levels is what it's called. So what we'll do is we'll just say thresh equals 0 0.05. That's kind of just a basic one. And then what we want to do is we want to set our number of levels. So we'll say n underscore levels equals. And then I usually like to do 100, but some people find that 50 is good. I'll show you 100 first and kind of show you what happens. So 100 gives you kind of this smoother look. It looks a lot better than the other one. So the lower the levels are, so say we only had 10, that means we only have 10 of these levels right here. If we zoom in, there's 10 of these different levels of the heat map. So if we actually boost this up to, let's say 50. So 50, as you can see, the levels are just a lot smaller. And then if we go down into 100, I mean, they're barely visible. So there comes a point where maybe there's not really a difference in the number of levels or it kind of looks a little funky. You can mess with it and you can kind of see what you like, what you don't like. But that essentially is how you create custom color maps. They're super cool. I mean, you can throw in a ton of colors. I mean, we can even just try, let's see what happens if we go from that light purple into like a, like this one right here would actually be kind of cool, a purple into a green. So we'll switch our end one right here and it looks kind of like that. I mean, not super helpful with this data just because, I mean, if we create random integers over, it's gonna be, um, they're gonna be pretty evenly distributed. But I mean, it's, you get the idea. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it. So be sure to just kind of try it out with, by following this tutorial first, and then you can start throwing it on your own data sets. Super interesting and super simple as well. So that's it for this video, guys. Like I mentioned before, if you haven't already, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any other ideas that you want, be sure to drop them in the comments down below and I will catch you in the next tutorial.